The chair recognizes the member from Bartlett, Representative Chandler, for a motion. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Madam Speaker, I would move adoption of floor amendment number 1982H. Representative Chandler moves the adoption of floor amendment 1982H, printed in House Record 37A on page 1873. Representative Chandler, did you wish to speak to your motion? Representative Chandler is recognized to speak to his motion. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Sorry about the confusion. I will be very brief, because there are one or two other speakers behind me. The, the whole essence of this floor amendment, I will simply sum up very quickly. It, it, there is, uh, the next speaker will speak to some of the constitutional issues, I believe. But matter of fact, it is, I'm of the opinion, and have been since we had the national health care reform debate, that the majority of the citizens of this state do not support that. And this quite simply says that to the federal government, we don't support it, we're going to do it our way, and so I would ask you to please vote for the floor amendment. Thank you. The question before the House is floor amendment 1982 on Senate Bill 455. The chair recognizes the member from Fremont, Representative Itza. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Make no mistake, the amendment before you is a nullification bill. The first question you must ask is, do you have the power? And the second, is it something that this legislature does? In engineering, when we're testing a theory or an equation, we look at it in its extreme. We might look at it at negative infinity, infinity, zero, one, and negative one as values. In this case, let's look at the extreme. If Congress were to pass a law requiring that all our citizens between the ages of 18 and 25 were to be pressed into service for prostitution to pay off the national debt, would we all sit meekly by and watch them go off? I think not. So obviously we have the power of nullification. Secondly, we have to ask, is it something that this legislature does? The proudest moment of my history here, probably, was in 2006, when the representative from Ware came down to a overwhelming majority report of ITL on no real ID. And he overturned that report. And this body stood together with unanimity and said, no. It's not within your power. The story didn't stop there. Because just as we're about to hit the end of the session, this body took the opportunity to, to amend no real ID onto every plum bill that the Senate was putting over here for concurrence. And we stood together, Republican and Democrat, conservative, liberal, constitutionalist, progressive, we stood together, we locked our arms, and we formed a wall that stood between the federal government and our constituents. And we watched every plum piece of legislation in that chamber fall to the floor. It was a glorious day. So now we know we have the power and we were the first legislative body in this nation to stand against real ID. Having established that, we have to ask, is the federal law that we're being asked to comply with, is it truly part of the supreme law of the land? Is there anything in Article 1, Section 8 that empowers the Congress to require the people of New Hampshire to buy a product. If they were to say, every person in New Hampshire must buy a new car every three years, would we say that was good law? Or would we say, no, that's not your power. Just as they have no power to say that 
citizens of New Hampshire must buy a new car every three years. They have no power to say that the citizens of New Hampshire have to buy health care. It is not, the, the Constitution says that the Constitution, the laws pursuant to it, and treaties are part of the, the supreme law of the land. This does not qualify. Can we comply with it? Sure. It's always within our power to comply, but we don't have to. So now you have to ask, do the people of New Hampshire want it? When there was a public hearing on the committee amendment, not one member of the general public testifying on their own behalf, representing themselves, testified in favor of that bill. The people of New Hampshire do not want this piece of legislation. So, I ask you now, I beg you, not to allow the federal government to force the people of New Hampshire to take food out of the mouths of their children to buy health insurance. I adjure you to do the right thing, the noble thing. Make the enforcement of mandatory purchasing of health insurance in New Hampshire a crime. Push the green button. The question before the House is Floor Amendment 1982 on Senate Bill 455. The Chair recognizes the member from Concord, Representative Blankenbecker. Thank you.